and action. Hey everyone, this video is all about the C200 on the Sion Crane 2. My name is Damien Cooper and this is Monkey Pixels. The fuck? <laughs> We've got some fresh new young talent doing some things that I know you haven't heard before. One, two, three, listen. So this is the video all of you have been waiting for. And with all of you, I mean a really distinct group of people that own the C200 and are looking into the Xeon Crane 2. But anyway, this one is for you. So we have been using the C200 on the Xeon Crane 2 for an entire month while being in Las Vegas uh, because we didn't really want to bring the big Ronin in because it's too heavy and it's really not quick when you're uh, changing lenses and everything. So we wanted to give the Xeon Crane 2 a chance and just tried it out for an entire month in Vegas. We also had our friend's Ronin as a backup. So if it didn't pan out, we could always revert to his Ronin. Don't buy this. <laughs> But we didn't really use it once and we shot everything, including one commercial, two music videos and two short films, all on the Xeon Crane 2 with the C200. So after this month, we decided to really give it a test because we mostly used it only with the 24 millimeters. And since a lot of people just don't use that lens and they want to know if it works with other lenses too, we decided to shoot an entire video just for the gimbal review. You can check it out in the description below. So I've seen a lot of reviews out there and mostly people just take the camera, mount it onto the gimbal and just walk around their apartment. Maybe if they're feeling a little frisky, they go outside to the next door neighbor and just walk around the street, which really doesn't cut it for us because we want to know if that gimbal can actually accommodate our needs as commercial uh, cinematographers and really is able to do a real world job. So that's why we took our friend Anna. Uh, she's a professional dancer. I'm Anna, I'm from Vienna and I'm a dancer and we will shoot something great today. Uh, so we wanted to have a little bit of movement because most of our stuff is in slow motion and slow motion, obviously the footage looks a lot smoother than it would usually be in 24, 25 frames. So we decided to use a dance video because uh, there's not a lot of slow motion in there because that is basically the most extreme setup we would use the gimbal for anyway. Um, we also, like I said, shot a music video as well as a short film. So we had really broad spectrum of commercial stuff we would use that gimbal for in order to really test if that is the right gimbal for us and our C200. So since we're shooting most of our videos in three stages anyway, this is a wide shot, a medium shot, as well as a close up. We really wanted to know if the Xeon Crane can handle all these three lenses uh, on location without really having a lot of time. So we use primarily the 16 to 35 2.8 by Canon, as well as the 24 millimeter 1.4 and the 50 millimeter 1.2. These are the three lenses we use most of the time for all of our commercial shoots anyway. Okay, so here's a disclaimer for the Xeon Crane 2. So first of all, we use the 1DX um, Mark II extension bracket. This is a small piece, it costs about $20 I think on Amazon and you can exchange this to the regular bracket which uh, allows you to move the camera to a lower angle. So since the C200 as well as the 1DX are really high cameras, higher than a regular DSLR or DSLM, uh, you need that extra space to lower the center of gravity of the camera. So definitely if you want to have the C200 on this gimbal, go buy this little piece for $20. Uh, there's a link in the description below as well. So another thing, the Xeon Crane 2 comes with a Manfrotto uh, base plate, which is really handy because now you can insert changes between a regular tripod mount as well as the Xeon Crane. So for example, the Ronin has its own special plate. So you always need to exchange the base plates if you want to go from gimbal to tripod, which is a little annoying. But then again, there's only a quarter 20 inch uh, screw on the tripod mount for the Xeon Crane 2. So obviously the C200 has a quarter inch thread uh, underneath, but there's one thing about it. Uh, it really sits in the front, so you have a little bit of limited motion, which we found when we wanted to have the smallest lens, the 50 millimeter 1.2, 
we couldn't really move the camera as much in front as we needed to to get the balance right. So what we did is we used a small adapter for our 1 quarter 20 inch to go to an 1 8 16 inch thread. So that way we have the um, base plate a little bit more centered and we have the full range of motion to accommodate all of our uh, big and small lenses on the gimbal. So as for balancing the C200 on the gimbal. Spoiler alert, it doesn't balance at all. For some reason, we couldn't balance the pan axis on that gimbal. The tilt angle, like going back and forth on the gimbal, works perfectly fine and it stays exactly in place where you want it to be as the gimbal should be when being balanced anyway. So for the pan axis, for some reason it didn't work. So either I was uh, tilting the camera a little bit towards the right or towards the left and it always kept tipping over. So, but the thing is, I managed to get it balanced to the point where it stays level on the gimbal. I could even have it on the gimbal, walking around without the gimbal being turned on. And it wouldn't stay in place in every position I would turn it to, like a regular camera would be when perfectly balanced. But it wouldn't tip over on its own either. So, that way the motors don't really need to be in constant action to balance the camera to not tip over anywhere. And would only need to balance it while being really on the move. And since we're still below the weight of the maximum payload of the Xeon Crane 2 and the motors are really freaking strong, I think that really isn't that big of an issue and made it to work. There's a little disclaimer too, it definitely draws a lot more battery power than it would regularly do with a smaller camera. I think Xeon um, has 18 hours of battery life for the Xeon Crane, which we almost achieved with the 1DX or even a 5D Mark IV. With the C200, since the motors are in constant motion to try to balance the camera because we couldn't really balance it manually, you get way less than that. I mean, we haven't really been able to run out of battery anywhere and I think we shot for almost two days straight, so eight hours one day and six hours the next day and we still had battery life left. So still, it's really a lot and I assume it's around 10 hours, but this is really nothing scientific and just our guess. But it's definitely for one shoot and if you wanna shoot all day, I'm pretty certain that the battery life will sustain over the entire day. So that being said, we couldn't really balance everything perfectly, even though we tried for a long time. But then again, if we really wanted to change lenses on the spot, we only had to balance a little bit left and right, forwards and back, and that was achieved in merely 30 seconds to a minute, which is completely insane. So on that shoot, uh, we had the 16 to 35, and then we quickly wanted to switch to the 50 millimeter 1.2, and it took us less than a minute and get the whole gimbal up and running again, which is just insane. So as for the gimbal being smooth, for the most part, yes, it was really smooth. We got even the smoothest footage, which is kind of surprising, with the 50 millimeter 1.2. We never really used a tiller or like a, a lens higher than 35 millimeters on a gimbal because it was really hard to balance on other gimbals. So now we used a 50 millimeter 1.2 for the first time on the Zune and probably one of the first times on any gimbal whatsoever. And I was really amazed about the job and we were able to really get some close ups uh, uh, with a lot of movement in there and really smooth footage, which I really, really like. So also a lot of people wonder uh, about the viewfinder. I mean, I personally hate the viewfinder. I never really use it. I would love to have the C200B without the viewfinder because I think it works way better on any kind of gimbal. Um, and we use it a lot on gimbals too, but you can't really get it in Europe. And for tax reasons, since our business is based in Europe, we need to buy stuff here and can't really buy it in the United States. Yada yada whatsoever. Uh, so we have the regular version with the electronic viewfinder. So we usually have the viewfinder angled 45 degrees upwards and it doesn't really hit the back of the gimbal too much. Yes, there is limited motion. You definitely cannot go under slug. We tried a little bit, but the camera is way too big to go under slug, so don't even try it. And the second thing is when you go into tilt mode, so if you really want to tilt the camera up or downwards, there is a certain point where you will hit the camera. So you have a little bit of limited motion there anyway. For us personally, it didn't really matter all that much because we usually most of the time use the camera in follow mode, which means it follows your entire movement up and down, left and right. And that way there was definitely way enough space, even with faster movements, that it didn't hit the gimbal. 
yes, when we really were working around a lot and had like really fast motion coming from upwards and wanting to have a lower angle, there were times we hit the back screw with the EVF. Um, which kind of uh, led to a little bit of rumble and camera shake, which was unfortunate. But then again, like I said, for a little bit of slower motions, that is definitely not an issue. So there's another thing. The way our camera is set up, we have a small rig base plate as well as a small monitor holder on top of it which allows us to mount different kind of stuff just on top like a microphone or the um, small HD focus on top of the camera. And I think the base plate, it's really not that heavy, but it gives a little bit of more weight towards the back of the camera. And I think that was a little bit crucial for the 16 to 35 or the Sigma 18 to 35 1.8, which we don't have, but a lot of people use that, which is roughly about the same size and weight as the 16 to 35 by Canon. So since we have a little bit more weight towards the back with the base plate, um, I think that actually accommodates the setup very well because now you don't need it to move that far back because you already have a little bit of counterweight in the back as well. So I'm not 100% sure if the 16 to 35 would balance as well uh, without the top plate, but I'm pretty certain you would just have to move it maybe a, a centimeter, which is like not even an inch further back, so that wouldn't really be an issue anyway. So we tried the C200 on the Xeon Crane without the dual handlebars, which works fine and actually makes for a smaller footprint if you really want to carry it around. But then again, I really like the dual handlebar because it distributes the weight more evenly. And I feel if you're walking around and moving around a lot, the dual handlebars really help um, with uh, getting smooth movement. So I highly recommend getting the dual handlebar. It's about $100 on Amazon and it really works great. There's one thing I really didn't like about it, and that is that the handles itself, they got loose a little bit. They have a little bit of wriggle room all the time, and I wasn't able to screw them on because it's not really a, a getting screwed loose problem. I don't really know what it is. It doesn't really matter, but it gets a little annoying if it's, you know, I like to have my thing sturdy and not really wriggling. What I like about the dual handlebar is that you can mount stuff to it. It has four one quarter 20 inch threads, as well as obviously the bar where you can attach the small HD focus to, which we did while shooting on the gimbal. What I also love about the crane too is that it comes with a really small tripod stand, so you can put it down easily wherever you are. You don't need a big ring, you don't need a separate holder for the Ronin, for example. So you can just set it down on a table, on the floor, anywhere you want. You can rebalance it wherever you want, and that comes in really, really handy. So there's one thing I don't like about the crane when it comes to portability. Of course, it's way smaller. It actually fits in a suitcase or in a backpack, which is insane. You can carry around the gimbal. We mostly had it attached to the back of our uh, backpack, but we also traveled with it overseas and just had it inside the backpack disassembled and that works really, really well and is way smaller than, for example, having a Movi Pro or a big Ronin that actually needs an extra suitcase to travel with. But then there's another thing. I really like how light it is and while it's turned on and you work around and you're on a job, it's really light and you can uh, really move with it quickly. But the thing is, if it's turned on, it's really awkward to hold and move around with. It doesn't come with a top handle and there's no way to attach one. So as for the Ronin, we just use it with a top handle and you can walk around with the camera on your side. But with the Xeon Crane, you don't really have that option. So you end up really holding it awkwardly and trying to hold the camera in place. And that just feels awkward to me. And it doesn't really uh, sound like a big deal, but then again, it kind of is if you walk around and have different locations all the time, which we experienced in Vegas a lot, where we shot these videos on different locations and ended up really walking around with the gimbal awkwardly in your hands. And that I kind of don't like about it. But then again, it's a small thing. And since the whole thing is so quick to assemble, disassemble, uh, disassemble and uh, balance, it's really easy to just pop it onto your backpack and hold the camera, or just put that one into your backpack as well. So it's really not a big deal. So as for reliability of the Xeon Crane 2, it wasn't 100% reliable. There were some shots that were really struggling. There was a little bit of wriggling. Uh, sometimes I'm not 100% sure if I hit the back of the uh, Xeon or if it just couldn't really handle the weight at this point because I was moving too fast. 
but there were shots that were just unstable and shaky. There were really a few of them and I couldn't really recreate what was happening, mostly with the 16 to 35 because this is really a long and heavy lens. But for the 24 millimeters as well as the 50 millimeters, we didn't really have a lot of issues. There was this one scenario in our short film where I was kind of jogging towards the car and looking at the footage, it was on the 24 millimeters, you could see really shaking. So I didn't really end up using most of the shot because it was just too shaky. I could have probably just warp stabilized this because I was just running in a straight uh, motion towards the car. So that being said, if you really have to use the footage, I think even if it struggles to be 100% smooth, you can definitely smooth that out in post-production with any warp stabilizer or integrated stabilizer and resolve or Final Cut Pro X. But that as a disclaimer, it doesn't work 100%, it's not 100% smooth. So where do I really see the Xeon Crane fit in? If you do a lot of fast turnarounds, if you travel a lot, if you do a lot of your own work for your own stuff, then the Xeon Crane is really awesome because A, it's way cheaper than the next best thing. We have the Ronin, the regular Ronin, but that is out of stock and isn't produced anymore. Because they came up with the Ronin too. And um, so basically you can't really get that one anymore. The Ronin M and MX, they're definitely not up for the test for the C200. Don't buy this. <laughs> So there's basically only a $600 version of the Xeon Crane 2 and the next best thing is the Movi Pro or the um, Helix or the Ronin 2 even and they are all well above six grand which is a lot of money and way more than the Xeon Crane. So there's really nothing in the middle in the price market of two to three to four thousand. So there's either 700 or six grand upwards. For us, it's basically, yes, we will use the crane on a lot of our shoots when we travel, when we want to do our own work, and even on small commercial jobs, especially when we need to travel somewhere. But then again, if you have bigger budgets, you can factor in the cost of renting just a Ronin 2 or a Movi Pro, but on these smaller projects, you don't really have that budget. And since we travel a lot, we would actually have to travel with another suitcase just for the Ronin, which cost overseas about 100 to 150 dollars anyway. And for that price, you can actually rent a Ronin 2 or a Movi Pro on set on your location. So I think for all of our abroad work, we will definitely use the Xeon Crane 2 because it creates a good enough job. So you've seen our short from the betrayal. And you've also seen the dance performance video. Taking whatever you touch, the sword of the wicked is covered in blood. Both were shot on the Crane 2 and we didn't use any stabilization in post and it obviously worked out very great. So yes, you can use the Crane C200 uh, combo on commercial shoots and it works definitely well enough to actually use it. If you really have a high budget, high paying job, I wouldn't recommend using the Xeon because it might let you down at some point in critical shoots. And if you're shooting events where you might just end up having to follow some action around and then giving that footage straight to the client, then maybe the Crane 2 isn't 100% reliable either. So the Crane 2 comes with a follow focus, an electronic follow focus, which is really awesome in theory, but for us it doesn't work with the C200. So if anybody watching this made it work on the C200, please let us know in the comments below because I'm really interested. We couldn't make it work, we attached it via USB, but it just didn't really connect with the camera. We used the dual pixel autofocus for most of the shots in uh, the dance performance video, which worked out pretty nicely. So we didn't really have to have the follow focus. It would have been nice. It works on the 1DX Mark II, but it doesn't work on the C200. So just as a disclaimer. So overall, do we recommend the Xeon Crane 2 for bigger cameras like the C200 or maybe an an FS5 or other cinema cameras? Yes and no. So if you're looking for highest quality, if you wanna have a gimbal that is 100% smooth as well as 100% reliable, then no, the Xeon Crane 2 is not for you because it will struggle sometimes. It won't be balanced 100% with all of your lenses. So if you're going for 100% quality, that is not the gimbal for you. But if you wanna have a gimbal that works very well, well enough for 95% of your shots, 
that you can travel with, which is lightweight and really, really, really cost just a buck. You could actually buy two of them, travel with both of them if one breaks and just have a small, a small print and still pay just a third of the price or even a quarter of the price you would uh, pay for a bigger gimbal. So this hasn't been a 100% scientific review, uh, but a real life uh, review from people who actually use the gimbal on commercial work. And this is our experience with it. So I hope you liked this video. Um, consider giving it a thumbs up, maybe even subscribing to our channel if you like that kind of content, because we will be posting more reviews, more videos, more behind the scenes and more making offs in the future. My name is Damien Cooper, this is Monkey Pixels, and I'll see you on the next video.